I saw that there was another person with an MW. Why is that? There's no MW here. Uh, that is just meeting with. That oh. is just a uh, <laughs> like a stock name before it loads in. That's really dumb. I don't. I don't make the rules. Like I, I've already complained about our platform. <laughs> Maybe you should. As part of platforms. I. <laughs> Do you have a suggestion? Uh, Zoom. <laughs> Okay, we are locked into 40, what is it, 40 minutes? Oh. Okay. Um, so we have to be less than 40 minutes. Google Meets. <laughs> Google Meets. Uh, we could. I think that also has limits. Um, it's fine. To... We can deal with Skype. We're going to try Google Meets next time. No. Okay. I'm looking forward to it. No? Okay. Well. No more Zoom after COVID, please. God no. You've been rejected. My life is... Um. This is The Experience Podcast with me and someone else. Ariana! Uh, that random dude that comes on every now and then. Not a new. I think our, you, I think Chase, you, yeah, I think you are more frequent than Ariana, who only really comes on once a year. Um, oh, special. She, she travels the world, you know, so once we have to. Here, that's her. not true. Uh, I, mean, I know I am a special guest, but it is it, not once a year. <laughs> um, let me see the last time you came on. When do you think the last time you were on was? Um. Well, I talked to. To Chandler, that was the last one. Yeah, that um, was in January. Okay, so it's been half a year. <laughs> and then the previous one was okay, so it's about every six months it looks like. Yeah. You know what? I'll I'll give you that. I haven't <laughs> spoken to Chandler since last year. Chase, I don't think I've spoken to you since you left Georgia Tech. Indeed, I kind of fell off the face of the earth, sort of. How have you been? Uh, I was really shitty for like the past six months and now i'm getting better so excellent well i'm glad to hear you're getting better but sorry that it was shitty for the last six months appreciate it how have you been pretty good living life uh grad school is life uh super duper fun right now um life is internship plus research on the side which is like extra fun (laughs) Um, so and, yeah. uh, in what, uh, what's your specialty in Gretzky? Uh, my master's is in human computer interaction. Oh, okay. Yeah. And my research is very niche. It's animal computer interaction. Very you can nice. Hear some about it if you listen to one of Daniel's episodes. <laughs> I shall. <laughs> one that's probably from like a year and a half ago. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I've, I've yeah, officially that. ruled grad school way the fuck out, personally, yeah. but, uh. That's fair. You know. It is a decision that I made. <laughs> it is a lifestyle choice and a commitment. <laughs> Daniel, how are you? I haven't spoken to you in six months. I, that's true. It's been about six months. Um, no changes. <laughs> Next topic. Well, I'm glad that life, I'm assuming, is good, since last time we talked, it seemed good. (laughs) Was it good last time? I don't even remember. I don't even remember. I just don't remember anything bad, so I'm assuming it was good. (laughs) Um, what did happen since last time? Nothing, really. You went to, uh, see... Did you go see Nadia? Or did you see Maisie? Was that this year? I think that was last fall. I think you're thinking of two Two episodes ago that you were on. I'm sorry. Well, I think both (laughs) of my two last episodes were with Chandler, to be fair. So it's... Really? Really? It's a mixed up. I think so. That's not... I I will say the combinations are usually not intentional. (laughs) It's really just whoever responds that week. 
Also, I think it's more fun when you don't tell me who it is. Oh, hang on. Oh. oh, okay, because I've received plenty of complaints about people not knowing who it is. Well... Excuse me, the, there's a fucking bird that has always been right outside my window, and at <laughs> evening, that's when the little bastard starts to chirp. <laughs> Every single day without fail, because it doesn't know what morning is. Anyway, continue, sorry. <laughs> what are you going to do about it? Huh? What, what? Uh, I'm thinking about shooting it and barbecuing the motherfucker, yeah. but anyway. Oh, wow. That's what we usually do in America is we just shoot our problems. <laughs> uh, I can think of a couple things uh, in and or around America that could be shot and solved, but, uh, you know. Um, for legal Anyway, Ariana, your thoughts on Daniel shooting. <laughs> huh? What did you say, Daniel? Your thoughts. On shooting things. On shooting things? I don't believe in guns. Um, you don't believe that they exist? Or? <laughs> yeah, this is a figment of our imagination. No, um, I don't believe that we should have them. Um, I mean, I could maybe be convinced that people could have some guns, but not uh, automatic guns. And I also think that there needs to be a crap ton more regulation on being able to own a gun and that needs to be fixed. And I think that is something that should be reasonable. I understand people not wanting their guns taken away, but maybe there should be like more regulation on owning a gun when things like driving a car takes so much effort to be able to do, but like, Having a gun does not. So, yeah. All right, well, we didn't ask you to get political, so. Well, you yeah. actually did. <laughs> we had to kind of cut all that out. I mean, I Jesus. I wasn't going to talk about Fuck, censor it all. I know, now we got to censor me. You guys asked me, so. I'm not going to. I don't think you. Re- this podcast supports the freedom of censure, so we're going to have to. Uh... <laughs> censure her. Oh dear. Wow, well, yes. he's silencing me, Daniel? Is this a man silencing a woman? Um, well, let me let me explain what that means to you. Um, <laughs> will you mansplain to that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. Um, Chase, as a white man, what are your thoughts on, on guns? <laughs> well, if I do declare, um, Personally, I think everybody should have mecha, and uh, we should all have uh, highly advanced laser swords and uh, laser guns by now. But uh, there's some problems with that. But yes, I also want I want everybody to have legally mandated guns. I want everybody to be mandated to have a gun. I think it would solve a lot of problems in the country, personally. Do you believe in Darwinian evolution? <laughs> Something about natural selection. Uh... Boy. <clears throat> anyway. Oh shit! I'm sorry. We have to censor that one. Your monetization's fucked. Yeah, we're gonna take out all of this. This is all. This, this will all be more. deleted. We can change the subject. I'm knitting right now as I'm speaking to you. Oh. Okay, are you knitting a gun? Oh shoot! Um, <laughs> oh shit! Oh, I said. Stop uh, talking uh, about uh, guns. Uh, uh, What's uh, this episode uh, to be ta- titled "Gun"? <laughs> G-U-N. It's a Sonic uh, reference. How's the knitting? It's good. I've never knitted before, and I'm making a oh, yeah. tank top. Um, I can turn my camera on, and you can see. Ta-da! So for the for the audience, she's knitting. Yeah, I'm knitting. Um, and hopefully, I'll, I'll be done making a tank top by the time I can still wear a tank top, and not <laughs> when it's cold out. <laughs> Oh, okay. I I wasn't sure where you were going with that. Um, I didn't. <laughs> oh my gosh, Daniel. I I don't know. No, I had no idea. I was like, what do you mean by not being able to? Well, I'm just saying I don't know how long it's going to take me, and it might end up being fall. How <laughs> long does it take to knit an uh, article of clothing? Uh, it depends on how good you are, and considering I've never done it before, um. I don't know. I th- I don't think it'll take me the whole summer. I have faith in myself. You could, um, cause you got like three months, right, to do it probably. Yeah, and this is the product of maybe two weeks. So. Oh, you'll be fine. Well, that's and a good start. Thank you. 
what are y'all up to? What are what are your fun activities that you've been doing outside of work? Uh, neuroscience and aliens. Hmm. Explain. <laughs> which one, and in which order? Whatever your heart desires, Chase. Well, I have been, over the past uh, seven months or so, getting my heads up, basically, and uh, slowly regenerating my brain map. And I have solved, with a lot of rush, with a lot of mushrooms, meditation, and exercise, and diet changes, and all these little micro-hacks that I learned from the likes of Dr. Andrew Huberman, and I hate it on Earth. And ultimately, um, I have uh, cured, well, I have significantly tapered off uh, depression, anxiety, psychosis, moderate schizophrenia, maybe, bipolar disorder, um, all kinds of nasty shit that I had in my head that, uh, well, it's been a rather tormentary process, but finally coming out of it. Wow. So you're... You're curing yourself by zapping your head, is that what I heard? Not quite. <laughs> Basically a lot of mushrooms. Okay, okay. okay. Oh, were you, like, microdosing? Is that what it is? Uh, no, I didn't have access to psilocybin. And if I had, I would have done the heroic dose, which is probably not a good idea considering what was in my head. You're saying a lot of things that I don't really know what they mean, Chase. I'm just, like, okay. assuming things. <laughs> oh, that's fine. Uh, don't bother learning either. It's, it's a bunch of small percentage points and hopefully very soon it won't matter for anybody, but, but ultimately, um, it's basically just a bunch of, for lack of a better term, neurohacking. Um, because what I've discovered is basically every major mental disorder is literal brain damage. Mm -hmm. It's like not, it's like, I find personally, and having been on this journey, I, I can tell you right now, I find therapy and psychology in general to be a joke because I tried all that shit for a while and it didn't do a damn thing. And then I started, you know, doing the physics solution or the biochemistry solution. And it, uh, sure enough, well, sure enough, it's uh, produced results. That, um, I, I'm truly grateful to have, um, although, you know, it's been a shitty process getting there. So, gotcha. Good for you. And uh, then, at, and then, what about you? I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. No, no. Go ahead. I was going to say, and then there's the alien stuff, which, oh, my God. <laughs> Please explain. Well, I have gotten quite into alien stuff in general for okay. various reasons. That is all. That, that's all? What's the most interesting thing that you've learned about it? Um... Oh my good God, where the fuck do I begin? Um, tell you what, I'll put it this way. Um, I think we're going to be contacted soon. And uh, basically, <laughs> God, I can't, I really can't say much yet. But um, suffice to say, suffice to say, um, there's, <laughs> God, where do, I, I literally don't know where to go with this. There's so much I could go to, but. Suffice to say, I think we'll be contacted by friends from outer space soon. Okay. What do you think they look like? They're humans in outer space. Okay. So there are also other species. Um, what do you think about the slight change of topic, but what yes. do you think about Crocodile Jesus? <laughs> um, right along the flying spaghetti monster, I worship them daily. <laughs> I am obsessed with Crocodile Jesus. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. I think it's hilarious. <laughs> um, what is yeah, the most surprising thing that you have learned in your alien adventures? Um, holy shit. Where do I go? Um, well, I suppose I should... <sighs> I guess I'll talk about what I have, like, physical evidence for and not my personal theories. Um, but suffice to say, I have, uh, paid attention to the ISS feed pretty, uh, pretty rigorously, and, uh, I've watched some damn ships decloak and cloak right in front of it, so hmm. that's all I can say. Uh, I think people ask, on a serious note, people ask the question, are we alone in the universe? And the answer is, uh, that's not even the right question to ask. It's, uh, why aren't they here yet? And the answer is, they are. The more rational question is, why the fuck are they not allowed to land? Mm. Yeah. I mean, the government released that footage. 
Oh, well, yes. So but, there's, there, yeah, there's a number of government releases of Shet, and suffice to say, the one of the most successful propaganda campaigns in American history, regardless of your politics, has been the censoring of basically alien content. Um, this is, you know, linked to the space race and what we did with the Soviet Union in the 1960s. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and you know, this is this dovetails um, with a lot of a lot of a lot of different content that. And a lot of it, I, admittingly, a lot of it does get into what I'll call conspiratory territory, um, of which I'm very familiar with various things in religion, spirituality, and, well, UFOs. But suffice to say, a little bit of common sense will solve uh, most problems. And uh, if you just take a look at the history of our government, you, you see what the UIP committee is. Uh, there's that whistleblower a couple weeks, or last week, I think, actually. Uh, the whistleblower that came out from the UAP committee from House and what he was not or what he was denied access to. And um, it, it, it suffice, suffice to say our state knows. And furthermore, our state has technology. Let's let's be real here. They have the technology. Area 51 is real. And the, the question is, to what extent it's real? Mm-hmm. And uh, again, to what interact to what extent we've been interacted with uh, everything else? I think, I you know, I can speculate on and. I'll simply speculate if asked, but I won't, you know, take up your time with that. Gotcha. Cool. Daniel, what's your opinion on aliens? Radio silence. Lots of process. <laughs> yeah, hold on. No, sorry. My thing took like a minute to unmute. Um, and I had all that time. I don't really have any thoughts. I haven't really been following Alien. Oh, uh, okay. I thought you haven't been following. No, 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 no. I've been following this conversation. Sorry, I didn't know. I've been following the, the news around it. So <laughs> I, I am not informed uh, as particularly to Chase's level. Um, well, what's the first thought that yeah. comes to mind with uh, with uh, things like that, for example? Um. Yeah, I I don't, I don't really. Uh, you're asking someone who doesn't form opinions to form an opinion. Please form an opinion. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I really don't. I, I I really I really don't have much to say on this. Uh, I I guess I I do find it interesting. I don't know. I guess I get regarding your question of. Why haven't they? Uh, why haven't they it? been why, allowed why to land? Yeah, why haven't they been allowed yet? I, I guess that's kind of where I am right now. I well, a, nice. You skipped all the bullshit. <laughs> I have a question. All right, I'm gonna go ahead. If there are other uh, living beings in the universe, which I think I would believe personally maybe i think it's possible i i don't really know if i have strong opinions because i'm not well informed but i think it's possible um if they look like humans how would we know that they aren't already here they are i mean like on earth they are but you said they aren't able to land (laughs) that's where it gets complicated (laughs) my friend um But you see, so I'll go into speculation for myself now. I I guess I'll start with the, because our culture has asked the question for a long time, are we alone in the universe? You have to start with things like the Drake equation, which is the probability that we are uh, finding intelligent life everywhere. The universe, as we know it from the Big Bang, which I believe is fundamentally wrong, but that's a different topic, um, is, I'll round down even, 13 billion years old. Our galaxy is at least four to five, if not ten, if, well, usually Lot long, it's actually a lot older, but let's say we'll go with our planet, actually. It's four billion years old. Now, we know from the fossil record that um, microbial life started around two, 2.5 billion years ago. And then, you know, our, our model of natural selection, speciation over time has led to the emergence of us, Homo sapiens, over, you know, a- after a number of cataclysmic events on the planet and other things. In that time, you know, assuming 
because the implicit assumption we all make is that, well, humans are special, right? In the sense that we, and mo- more specifically, not humans are special, that Earth is special. Is that we evolved, you know, to be this higher primate on Earth, so to speak, and that we basically are implicitly imputing our model of evolution upon the universe. We're saying that, well, it took us this long to evolve. Life must be very, very uncommon. The universe is billions of years old, right? The probability is one that it, when you when you start thinking about it, the probability is one that we're not alone. So then the question becomes, well, hang on a minute. Why haven't we been visited? Because naturally, you're going to have uh, contact between different races of people, different species, et cetera, that are interstellar, right? And interstellar, um, as we can observe from our own civilization, interstellar con- uh, travel is inevitable. It's an inevitable result of enough, you know, knowledge, technology, et cetera. So what ends up happening is it's all, when you follow, when you connect the dots, we have been visited. But what we observe around us is a fucked up, what I believe to be an intentionally rendered primitive society um, that is, in many ways, I believe, totally exceptional to the norm in the galaxy. Um, the question is, wait a minute, where the fuck are the aliens? Well, like I said, I've watched them. I've watched their shit. You know, you see all the UFO videos. You see all the shit. They're obviously in orbit around the Earth. If you see the videos, right? If you see the ISS feed, if you see things like that. Now, the question is, well, and the next thing I the next thing I like to talk about with people is the invasion narrative, right? Because we have in our culture these movies like War of the Worlds, etc., mm-hmm. where you are, well, we're going to be invaded by aliens. They're going to harvest us, probe us, resources, whatever the fuck. Total nonsense. Why? Why the hell would they need us? That's the question. It's like, why the hell would you need this species or this planet when you have interstellar travel? First, furthermore, we know from our own nature, right, which is, you know, somewhat as above, so below, but um, we know that there are good people and bad people. Surely there must be good or bad aliens, right, so to speak. Now, if they're here... If if the bad ones were here to kill us and invade us, wouldn't they already have while we were more primitive? I mean, that, that's that's the question that I ask people, and they're like, huh, you know. So we're obviously not going to be invaded, right? Now, the next question, you start parsing this out, it's like, wait a minute. You're telling me there's spaceships in orbit around the Earth. Yes, 100% provable. In fact, there's an event that happened recently where one literally crashed in Las Vegas. Um, you should look that one up sometime. It's a fascinating story. Um, but there's all these layers of information or of misinformation, right? There is, how do we know what's in space? NASA, ESA, Mm -hmm. the, the, the space station, the ISS, um, the JWST, the James Webb, uh, space telescope, um, the Hubble telescope, everything is filtered through NASA. And I will personally, I will allege that there is a, an informational conspiracy there, uh, present at NASA and ESA to censor content from space to us. I will simply allege that and leave that aside for now. Now, the problem is, wait a minute. If they're here, they must be watching. Why are they watching this disaster? Because if they're good, wouldn't they want to help? Right? And the answer is obviously they want to help. Right? Because if you, if any of us, if we saw a wounded animal, right? What are you going to try to do with it? You're going to try to nurse it back to health. You're going to try to maybe, or, or a wounded person is perhaps better. Um, you're going to take them to the hospital. You're going to say, sir, are you, or sir, ma'am, are you okay? Um, are you, you know, are you in pain? What, what can we do with you? That's the kind of empathetic response you have. It must be the case for at least some of them out there. Yes, that's the empathetic response. Your planet is sick and fucked up. What are we doing? The problem is, well, why wouldn't they land? And you go through a number of reasons that you can you can talk to. It's like, well, you know, what if there's a non-interference principle? Well, then why is there tech on the planet, right? You you go through a number of iterations of like, well, are we are they being kept from us to an extent? But then again, are we powerful enough to stop them from landing? No, neither is our government. So the only logical conclusion is they're prevented from landing, right? Which is fascinating to me because we have a planet here where people who want to help other people, and that's fundamentally what, I mean, we call them aliens, we can call them extraterrestrials or whatever, but they're peoples who want to help other people are fundamentally fucking prevented from helping other people. 
And that's why I think there's literally an exopolitics going on that is, you know, somewhat complicated. Now, you know, I don't know. You know, I can't really tell you more than that other than, uh, other than, you know, I think in some ways where things are progressing and smoothing to the point where eventually contact will be made. Frankly, at this point, I'm convinced maybe by accident. Um, but, you know, ultimately, that's what I think our, our scenario is. And I, I can guarantee you, you're going to see more contact over time, right? The question is when? And of course, we're on Earth and we're busy with Earth life. And listen, I don't, I don't expect anybody, first of all, I don't expect anybody to believe what I say. Number one. Number two, I don't expect anybody to be forced to pay attention to, you know, alien shit, right? Everyone has a nine to five. Everyone has their, has their lives here. All I'm saying is, this is, the answer to the, the, the fundamental question that I'm frankly tired of hearing from people, um, because, and it's not anybody's fault, it's just so ingrained in our culture of, are we alone? You know, it, and, and you know, I ask the question myself, and then, you know, you start looking for evidence, you start reasoning through it, and, and you come to conclusions, right? And now I'm fascinated by the question, right? Why aren't they here yet? And then, you know, when you ask that question, you can go into all kinds of conspiracies that involve the state, involve exopolitics, involve a number of different things. And it's all just sad. I mean, it, it, it's one of the most horrific things I can think of is we're prevented from, you know, we are kept in a cage, basically. You know, that, that's kind of an inescapable conclusion. And it fundamentally infuriates me. But, yeah, that's another conclusion. So, what if, I guess what I was trying to say, though, is, like, what about the lizard people? <laughs> like, oh, the reptilians? Oh, I'm sure they're, uh, <laughs> like, I don't, I don't believe in reptilians, no. Like, like, I don't specifically mean what about the lizard people. I mean, like, if they look like us, then how do we not, how do we know if, we have not already just been interacting with aliens in our daily lives. Like, have, have they not been, you know, pulling the strings and controlling our society? Well, <laughs> oh, Christ. Um, so, oh, Jesus. I don't know. It's, I think there's influence. I absolutely do think there's influence. I have to be kind of careful what I say because I can't tell you the entirety of my beliefs without you either thinking me insane or immediately asking me for me for, uh, for me proof rather. Sorry, a little tongue twister there. Um, suffice to say, I believe that we are interacted with quite frequently. Um, I don't think they're in control. I think fundamentally all three of us have free will. Therefore, we have the ability to you know, have exert some control over environment within the parameters of physics, right? And so I, f I feel like there is interaction, um, and that's about it, right? I, I do think they're here. I think they're doing more than observing. I think they are interacting in ways that are subtle, and that's all I can say. Okay. Daniel, what are your thoughts? Do you have any opinions? <laughs> Um, <laughs> I, 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 Ryan, you're re huh? I said, Mister, I have no opinions. I don't, Ariana. You are really concerned about what they look like, though. So. <laughs> I, I am. That I mean, is your one and only concern. Like, okay, you know, there is one conspiracy theory that I just think is like so fun, and it's that. Yeah. Mark Zuckerberg is a lizard person. No, he's a robot, obviously. He really does look like a lizard person. Like <laughs> There is something off about Mr. Zuckerberg. I mean Zuckerberg, I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, I've been called a robot as well. <laughs> um, I Manuel, remember. I want to hear about your hobbies. Um, my hobbies? What, what, what have you been doing in your free time apart from your podcasts? My free time? Hmm. 
That's gonna take some thought. Um, I don't know. I got, I got a fantasy baseball team. I guess that takes up a few minutes every day. <laughs> okay. I have another question that's like somewhat related. It's not super personal, but it's about hobby. Yeah. Um, hobbies. So, what do you guys think is like the definition of a hobby? Like, is it something that I do in my free time and like that's just it? Um, do I? Is it something I have to um, be skilled at? Is it something I have to do on a regular basis? Like, what are the qualifications of what can be a hobby and what cannot? Well, I've monopolized the conversation, so Daniel, will you take this one? Uh, a hobby? I don't think you need skill. I'm going to rule out skill. Okay. For a hobby. I think it's something that you do um, like, by like choice. Is your is your fantasy baseball team, is that a hobby? Uh, I would consider it a hobby. Okay. Sorry, continue. I interrupted your definition. Well, Ariana, you've done fantasy football. Would you consider that a hobby? No. If you do it every year? Uh, I guess if I was a little more involved in it than okay, me. Yeah. But, like, I just didn't really give a shit. So, like... Oh, yeah. I think I would call it a hobby. Okay, so so if you were involved in it more... If I was, like... So there's a time commitment. Like ...researching to find out, like, the best players to keep on my team and all that stuff, then maybe, yeah. I mean, looking up their pictures to, to rank them by attractiveness is part of the research. <laughs> um, hey, the, I didn't really do that. I picked players that had fun names. Um, <laughs> Okay. <laughs> and ones that I'd heard before, so I thought they were good. And I was right. Um, yeah, so, like, uh, it's a time commitment thing, right? If you put in a certain amount of time. I don't know what that threshold is. Like, but and then also, dedication. my question is, like, do you think that something that is something everyone else does it can be a hobby. Like, if I said, like, walking is a hobby, would you agree? Yeah, I I feel like you should. You, we can have a very inclusive definition of hobby. Okay. Good to know. Um, Chase, go ahead. Uh, well, hobby is basically something you do on Earth to kill fucking time. Some some trivial skill or something that means something to you that uh, you basically pour hours into until, well, hopefully life improves. <laughs> so hobbies are a means to death. Is that what you're... Indeed. <laughs> Terminally boring. They're just, they're, just a, they're just in the way of death. Well, hopefully not for much longer, but... Um, but anyway, the... Yeah, I mean, I guess, you know... So I guess my hobby, one of my hobbies is video games, and it comes and goes. I'm not quite as interested in it right now, but um, you know, it's just something you sink time into that means something to you that you know, you're know you kind of fiddling around with. You don't even have to do anything with it, really. And Ariana, your opinion of Hobby Lobby? <laughs> um, it's, a, it's an all right store. I think I would prefer to go to a place like Michael's or Joanne's or something. Hobby Lobby has, is it, I don't even know if I've been to a Hobby Lobby. It's got like home goods type stuff too, right? It's got things related to hobbies. Um, it's like a lobby that has <laughs> goods related to Have you ever been into a Hobby Lobby, Daniel? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think I have. <laughs> you know what I probably have? I've probably been in the Hobby Lobby. But no, I don't remember. It's really funny. Um. Okay. Uh, what is one thing that the both of you miss about 
You. One thing you miss about Georgia Tech, and one thing that you miss about the marching band. Well, I'm going to cheat and say the first answer is marching band. Period. And then the second thing is uh, probably just the 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 specific kind of little social interactions that happen every now and then. These little moments. Um, you know, whether it was you know one of the dwarfing things or. Whether it was the goddamn uh, Daniel, do you remember the? Uh, were you on the Florida trip with Josiah when he saw the chick on her knees in the in the fucking air elevator? Yes, I was. Yes, I was. What were your opinions on that? Uh, you know, to each their own, I guess. <laughs> Indeed, I've come to be more accepting of such things over time. However, uh, not for me. <laughs> Anyway, continue. Yeah. Oh, I didn't start. Um, okay. Uh, things I miss. Things missed. Hmm. What happened? Yeah, I guess the social interactions are, are definitely different than they are now. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Whether that's related okay. to... The, the answer is... Huh? Who- be me. <laughs> I, I that was the that was get, I was getting to that. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. Continue. Oh my god, I don't know. You gotta like, give me time to build up to you. I'm not just gonna start. Okay, like, okay, lay it on me. Tell it to me. Okay. Um. Anyway, I lost it all. Uh, it's the social interactions which are different um, now after the pandemic and moving away and getting a job and this yeah. particular job and that sort of thing, but. You really miss the interactions with some of your best friends. Um, I mean, one person in particular, I don't like to usually name names here, you know, <laughs> but I, I have to call out Ariana. Um, cause, Aww. Cause that was just I- irreplaceable, I guess, is, is probably the, the best word. Oh, so true. Thank you. <laughs> You're irrepla- irreplaceable, too. Um, next topic. <laughs> <laughs> um, next question. Is what is something you don't miss about the marching band? I don't miss the days where I didn't get to see Ariana. <laughs> the days that I didn't get to rehearsal. Yeah, yeah, the days where you, what was the last year where you missed like half the rehearsals? Is that right? Plus yeah. three there, sorry. Oh yeah, you weren't there anymore, but yeah. <laughs> I came to only Friday rehearsals. Yeah. That was awesome. It was not awesome because I missed you on the other rehearsals. Well, you weren't in school then. It's, 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 Ariana, it's, it's metaphorical. I, it was, it, none of the days were awesome actually because I missed you every single day. Oh. Like, um, Chase, thoughts on Ariana missing me? A Greek tragedy in seven acts. I'd anyway, so Daniel would say this if he were here. You <laughs> had <laughs> a placeholder. <laughs> you wouldn't know because you're not. You you wouldn't know what I would say, or maybe you would. I True. I I don't know. I I maybe I, I become. I knew you well enough. Yeah, maybe I become predictable. What, what is it that you don't miss about the marching band? Um, being drum major actually. Because part of, part of the job was fantastic. The rest of it sucked. But Did you get to hear Hot Goss with the, the band directors? How what now? As a drum major, would you get to hear Hot T with the drum majors? Or, sorry, with the band directors? Uh, well, before practice or rehearsal every day, we would get there 30 minutes early and have this half-assed, half-baked fucking... Uh, planning session for the day or whatever where Simo and BJ would bit or sorry DJ um fuck I BJ dude, yeah get some letters confused sometimes um but anyway it, it, it was I don't know you would get to know and they would be like relatively calm or relatively seething depending on what would <laughs> what would be the day um and it was just a bunch of, like, basic shit, and the behind-the-scenes was a whole bunch of everybody was tired and tired of everybody's shit, and 
the behind the scenes sucked, really. It was boring as fuck. And, uh, I don't know. Interesting. Okay. Heard it here, folks. The rest of it was cool. Including forgetting my fucking, uh, or the bowl game when we got our ass beat by Minnesota. We, uh, I forgot my, uh, my boot or my shoes, so I did the, the sock tape thing and Simo was livid at me. Oh my god, he was so angry. <laughs> that, so wait, you forgot your shoes or your socks? Oh no, I had socks. I put the socks over the shoes like half the other, like, like at least other ten other people did. Okay. Um, okay. Well, yep. Yeah. Go ahead. No, I, I, I'm all out of questions. So. Are you all out? You're done. I think we can end it there. We're, we're, we've, we've talked enough about, um, just to recap, guns, aliens, uh, our, our love for Ariana. You know that that's like the three main pillars. I would say. <laughs> How much of this are you able to keep? Because um, you have to cut everything out. I don't know if your sponsors cool. even like me, so. Yeah, probably like thirty seconds. I would say <laughs> it's gonna be it's gonna be a quick one. Most of the episodes is gonna be the music. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be, hey, this is the Experience Podcast with me and someone else, and it'll be our name. It's and it's static. That's it. <laughs> Thank you for listening. <laughs> I hit stop recording, and the world ended. Let me tell you.